Welcome back to Families in Action on our hometown station, AM 1220 KHDS. I'm Kerry Quashin. My co-host is Bob Sheritz. And today we have Mike and Larry with us. Mike's from Henry Mayo Newhall Hospital, and Larry's over at COC. That's right. So yeah, we so we were, to, you know, before we went on this last break, we were starting to get into uh, the different ways you can tell if somebody may or may not be uh, contemplating or getting ready to attempt suicide. Uh, Mike shared with us a story about a lady that he was right. able to identify on the phone. But if I, just for the lay person, somebody right. out there, right, how do I, how would I know? What are some of the warning signs that might give away? I mean, obviously the most, the most obvious is somebody's actually talking about wanting to die. The, you, you, or, or, they're, or to kill themselves. Well, they, I, they say, I'm thinking about killing myself, or it shows up in their writing or in their art or in what they say or what's on Facebook. So that's the, yeah. the number one obvious and, and it sign. And just, just on that one, you better take that seriously. I was going to say, and it I'll almost seems silly to you, say that, but, but I'll tell you, you know, why. we always take it Because a lot of times people say, hey, it's just used as manipulation. It doesn't matter. Take it seriously anyway. Take it serious because yeah. if right. they don't <laughs> get whatever it is they're looking for from trying to manipulate you they they could start flirting with it and end up in big trouble right yeah even if they're even if they're just contemplating uh, we want you to listen non-judgmentally listen for the pain listen to what their struggles are and encourage them to get professional help or to do to encourage some self-help kinds of things the other thing is that they're starting to look for a way to kill themselves they're searching online for a gun or something like that uh, one of the most powerful uh, symptoms or signs is if they're feeling hopeless. That's like the, probably the number one. If you feel, hear somebody feeling hopeless, they don't think there's anything that they can do. Well, that's the, the one of the words. Kinda. That's one of the words I really look for. Yeah. If you're feeling hopeless, if they're uh, feeling trapped, or as as, as Carrie was saying, they, the, they have unbearable pain. Sometimes we don't remember. How, how painful some of our thoughts and feelings and our situations can be. But that pain is, is, is as difficult to, to manage as any other pain, any physical uh, pain that we might have. The uh, mental health pain is really, really serious. Yeah. And if you have you know, unbearable mental health pain... It's actually uh, worse than physical pain. It, it really is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you uh, are, if some, somebody's talking about being in a burden to others, and this is very often mm -hmm. the case with this, with our seniors, they feel like they're a burden to others, or people that are disabled, mm -hmm. or people that have uh, physical f physical ailments, and they're needing help. But even even healthy people feel like they're a burden to others sometimes. Right. Um, increasing use of alcohol and drugs. Um, somebody that's just normally doing fine, they're starting to self-medicate with alcohol and drugs. Uh, they're act, acting anx anxiously or, or behaving recklessly. For some people, taking their own life is something that just can't, they can't, um, they can't accept that they would take their own life, but nevertheless, they will take their car and drive recklessly on right. a road, right. and they'll, they'll say, well, you know, they'll find me, I'm dead, you know, but, but I had a car accident, you know, so it's just not acceptable. It may be in their spiritual beliefs or whatever, so they're acting recklessly. Um, somebody that's sleeping too little or too much, and uh, obviously somebody that's withdrawing. They're feeling isolated, even though they may not be isolated. They're feeling isolated, mm -hmm. but they're withdrawing. Um, and some of the more dangerous things we see is somebody's showing a lot of rage, or they're talking about seeking revenge. Um, when you when you hear that, that's a that's a sign that somebody's going to do something that's not only destructive to somebody else, but s they're destructive to themselves. A revenge act mm -hmm. is usually uh, uh, it has a component of self-destruction. Giving away prized possessions. Giving away prized possessions and displaying extreme mood swings. And another thing that we look for that's probably the number one thing besides actually, besides feeling hopeless and saying they want to kill themselves is they actually have some kind of organized plan that that says, hey, this, this thing can really happen. Like somebody mm -hmm. says, hey, I'm going to go use a gun. I'm going to take my life tonight. Or I'm going to drive my car off the cliff or some kind of a... Uh, organized plan. That's something we really take extremely yeah. seriously. Because, that, because the more detailed the plan, the more exactly. likely they're going to carry it out. Exactly. And, and as family members, when, when we see these kinds of things going on, family people, the normal person really isn't trained in, in, in life-saving mental right. health issues. So you really want to get somebody to a professional. Well, there's right. a fear that people are afraid that if they say something, it's going to cause them to actually right. do that. Right. But, that but just, that's, that's why a, that's the, a myth. 
That's, that's right. That's that, a myth. I was say, that is a myth. Right. Right. That's so, why mental health first aid is such a good thing. Right. We have things called mental health first aid. We have assist training, all kinds of different trainings that we've arranged through the Blue Ribbon Task Force, through the college, so that ordinary people in the community, whether it's a sheriff or a person that stays at home and takes care of the kids, can can uh, get training on how to how to manage a suicidal uh, uh, friend, relative. And we just don't, sometimes just don't take these things seriously enough. Um, and the other thing I want to say is I love the commercials. It says, who does depression affect and hurt? Everyone. everyone. Where does it hurt? Everywhere. Right. Because it's really true. When we're living with someone or we know somebody that's close to us that is going through this, it hurts us too. Let, let me just right. take a quick poll here among the four of us. Uh, how, how many of us, of the four of us, have been affected by suicide? Somebody in our family, somebody close to us that's taken their life. Well, growing up, there was definitely some kids that I knew that took their lives. Yeah. Um, once, once, one at a party in front of us. I had, I had a nephew who took his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can't say that I ha that I have, but I've worked with so many people that have. I feel like right. I have. But yeah. here we are. The, yeah. here, here we are. There's four of us, and mm -hmm. two of us have been directly impacted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On that note, this is Families in Action on our hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. We will be right back. Welcome back to Families in Action here on KHTS, AM 1220, your hometown station. This is Mike Doherty along with Bob Sheritz. All right, I'm leaving. He's so Larry good. Caution. He's got the job. He's got it. That's right. You need to get to your radio. Larry Shallard. Shallard. You pass the audition. <laughs> wow, hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm Johnny Cash, boys. Here. Well, you got to remember, Mike, and you have a history in TV and, and radio. A you? long history, I do. I actually do a voiceover work here for KHTS. I know you do. Occasionally, yeah. So we have been, you know, certainly, you know, there's, um, we've been talking about some very serious issues. And, um, you know, uh, one of the things, it, it's interesting, you you know, you've been often asked, like, how do you do this for so long, you know? How do you and not? a lot of us, you know, you had asked the question earlier, Mike, um, how many of us have been affected by this issue, particularly suicide or suicidality? And uh, I think Larry's answer was kind of the same as mine. is not directly in my family, but, God, we work with so many people that um, it happens from time to time, you know? And um, so the, I think the big purpose of, of, of us being here today, more than anything, is to raise awareness and talk about it and to leave, you know, I think the big picture is for those listeners to understand that you don't have to be afraid to talk to anybody. Uh, the only shame or stigma associated with it is what you put on it because it doesn't have to be that way right you know and it and is you can recover it is know. absolutely and you can recover and yep. nothing and you can recover and nothing's worth taking your life right so we got a couple of minutes left you guys let's let's get that phone number out there again and talk about some of the resources that are here in the community okay. things that we're doing so one of the the phone number again is 1-800-273-TALK 1-800-273-8255 Write that down. And, you know, we have the, uh, this wonderful committee called the Blue Urban Task Force that meets on a monthly basis. And uh, it's supported by the city and all of our local providers, including uh, Action and Child and Family Center and Santa Clarita Mental Health and, and Safe Rides and all Henry Mayo. Henry Mayo. Henry Mayo. So, sorry, <laughs> I always leave you. I'm sorry. Uh, but we've identified uh, suicide and suicide prevention as, as a very important um, issue for Santa Clarita Valley. We know the statistics. We know there's over 30 uh, known suicides uh, completed last year. So we have a subcommittee that and, includes and 15 this year, and 15 this year. Um, so we've we've established a subcommittee that meets uh, on a monthly basis. As a matter of fact, we meet this week Thursday. We meet at College of the Canyons, and our local resources are there. And and uh, we got to get uh, action there too. So, Thursday. but uh, Bob Bob chair co-chairs the uh, Blue Ribbon Task Force. But the other uh, uh, person that's there is KHDS. So Perry Smith right. attends, yeah. and and he's been really good about. How you report suicide in the in the newspaper, and so you might have seen some of the recent articles that he's put out around mental health, and uh, he always includes resources for for people, and he's uh, the reporting it sensitively has been really important. The sheriff is there, uh, giving us statistics. He's asked us to come and 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 train them, and and their roll calls. We have faith based. Uh, 
uh, organizations there, and we're setting up uh, a faith-based uh, clergy breakfast where we will train clergy and, and so that they can train or, or know how to manage people in their congregation. So, and we're available to train any group uh, on suicide prevention, the warning signs, and what to do. We have programs like mental health first aid. We have the college has called the SPIRIT program, the suicide prevention intervention training program. Um, and we have the ASSIST program. So through the Blue Urban Task Force and through the college's uh, Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Act grant, we've been able to, to uh, stage lots of trainings and we're willing to, to go anywhere where people might feel like they, they could get something out of that. So it's really nice to have the support from the, from, from the community, local resources, the city, KHTS, and... and uh, what a great community. We're it's, it's really uh, heartwarming. Isn't and, it? Uh, I think we're really making an impact. We are. I mean, we're definitely making an impact. And it's like I was telling, we have leadership and staff meetings over at the hospital, and we said, you know, don't forget we're saving lives out here. Absolutely, That's every right. day. That's right. And you, and, you, and you can always tell the ones you lost. I mean, the, the 15 this year, the 30 last year. But what about all the ones that get that actually lives get saved? That's what we're all what about. You guys do at COC and what we do at Henry Mayo yeah. and what you do at Action. Think and about we and Larry and I. Yeah. Larry and I work together. Larry will yeah. call me and tell yeah. me that they have a, a student in trouble and. It's really uh, gratifying, like for instance, we have a student that comes in that does meet criteria, is a danger to self, and, and I can call Michael and say, Michael, mm -hmm. we're sending over a student, uh, and um, Michael's there, he'll, he'll uh, notify.